Hey, what's happening? Good one, sir. James coming at you guys with another video. In today's video, I'm here to give you guys a quick little channel update and, of course, to have a general discussion about a few different topics. So, in terms of the update here on the channel, you probably noticed that things have been slow for the past few days. I was actually wanting to do a certain VR game. It was like a dungeon crawler-based game. However, I had a huge headache over the weekend and was just unable to do that. So, I should hopefully be able to start that maybe tomorrow or so. But at the same time, I'm also working on the Elder Scrolls Online for my review on that. So that's what I'm currently working on at the moment. But like I said, in general right now, things are a bit slow because we're all waiting for the main event, which is of course E3. When E3 hits, I'll be sure to uh, make sure you guys are updated on information. Do keep in mind that during the time I'm also at my other job, so uh, I won't be able to do videos until I get home. But my plan is if there's any like big announcements like collector's editions, I'll be sure to make videos on that, giving you guys all the detailed information. I'll be also giving you my thoughts and opinions about Sony's press conference, Microsoft, and so forth. Because uh, we all know that Microsoft is going to be revealing the uh, Scorpio console and all that fun stuff. And as for Sony, not sure what they have planned. Maybe they have something hidden that uh, has yet to be rumored or released to the public. Who really knows? But uh, overall, I'm really looking forward to it. a lot of great games and new IPs. So uh, hopefully things turn out great. But like I said, that's when news content should be paid up here on the channel was when E3 hits or maybe even the day before because there's a lot of rumors that tend to leak usually two or three days before the main event. Um, anyways, to go over some general discussions really quick, the first thing I want to go ahead and talk about is a topic that I don't really talk about here on the channel, but some people are kind of curious because a lot of people have been asking me if I have a like Patreon account set up, and the answer is no, nor do I plan on setting one up because I've always had the option on my channel. It's something that I don't advertise or promote. If people see it and they want to donate, that's completely optional. Is that I've always had a donations page set up, and if you want to figure out where that is, it's in the description down below. But basically, uh, the the YouTube ad boycott, as you guys know, has affected a lot of YouTubers' channels. If you're a big time YouTuber, honestly, you're not affected. And there's a lot of big channels out there that are acting like, oh, they're hurt and they're like losing all this money. Honestly, if you're someone with like a million subscribers, if not more, they're just fine. If you're a smaller channel like me, who obviously doesn't even have 100,000 subscribers yet, though that is my dream goal, then of course, channels like me, of course, are affected big time. It's basically to the point where the money that I now make on YouTube is not enough to afford something off the dollar menu at like a McDonald's. That's how bad it is. But you know what? Uh, I never got into YouTube for the money uh, for like the reason why I got into YouTube in the first place is to help with my depression. Uh, video games and making YouTube videos help with my depression by a lot. So this is something that I have a passion for. But like I said, I've always had a donations tab. It's just something that I never promote here on the channel. But again, if you want to donate, it's completely optional. I'm not asking you to. I'm not forcing anyone to. So that is just a quick topic on that. I don't want to go into too much detail. Otherwise, it would be like a long string up video, yada, yada, yada. And I don't want to throw in some stupid backstories and whatnot. But anyways, besides that, I also want to update you guys on the PlayStation 2 eBay haul. If you guys didn't know, um, over the weekend, I did an eBay haul. You probably noticed that I have another video game rack set up over here with all the PS2 games. And I did clean up that one fat PS2, which I have right here. As you guys can see, it's cleaned up very nice to the point where it looks brand new. I got that red paint all cleaned off. I basically took it apart, soaked the plastic in hot soapy water. Had to scrub this corner a lot to get that red stuff off. And the fan back here, it looks super clean. Thankfully, this was not filled with dead bugs. You may have seen videos where people take old PS2s apart and it's just filled with like cockroaches and stuff like that. Thankfully, that's not the case here. It's just more uh, filled with a lot of dust and debris. Uh, but I got that all cleaned up. The only thing I really need for now for the PS2 is a USB uh, headset. So for the games like SOCOM, I like using the uh, headset for the game. So that's the only thing I'm really missing for this. But like I said, it turned out very nice. And it also has the online adapter, which again, I don't think there's any other online support. I think online support for the PS2 is pretty much officially dead. Uh, one thing I didn't actually not know when I, as a kid growing up having the PlayStation 2 is that this slot back here, and again, this only goes for the fat model PlayStation 2, is that when you remove this, there's like this huge empty slot back here. I never knew what that slot was until like about two years ago when I was watching a uh, video online 
where I was like, did you know PlayStation facts? And there's like different videos for like the PS1, 2, and 3. When I was watching the PlayStation 2 one, apparently you could put in a full hard desktop hard drive into this and like you could install like some type of Windows program like Linux or something like that. So that was pretty cool. Some unknown facts I didn't know. Uh, the only fact that I really did know is that when you boot up the PlayStation 2, you'll notice like all these different towers and stuff like that during the boot menu. And basically that represents the data on your memory card. The more games you have installed, the more squares you see on screen. And the bigger the tower is basically the bigger the safe state. So if you guys didn't know, now you do know. Or if you want to know what video I'm talking about, I'll have that in the link in the description down below. Some pretty fun stuff there. Um, but see, well, besides that, um, also I did fix that one controller that had the broken L1 button, took that apart, cleaned it really good. So that is nice and clean. I still need to clean the other controllers. I mean, they're not that bad, just that it was only this particular lot that was. And the memory cards are nice and clean about it. Uh, usually a lot of people tend to buy the memory cards to kind of figure out what the previous owner was like. There wasn't really anything on this PS1 memory card that's been pretty much already wiped. Uh, the black one that actually came with the fat model PS2 was basically filled with uh, the fighting games because the, uh, the previous owner was into a lot of fighting games in general. And this one right here had uh, pretty much like the SOCOM games on it. It also had the God of War series and Grand Theft Auto, so the person's more into a lot of violent video games as well. But that's really all, the only history I got out of these, but these have been pretty much completely wiped, so it's now using my own save data. But that's pretty good. Uh, but uh, the one thing I do want to mention is that I do have another eBay haul coming, uh, hopefully in the next week or two. I have one item that's coming in this week. There's another item, which thankfully the eBay seller actually unlisted the item to put on hold for me, which I'm thankful for because this is, it's a big lot. It's a lot bigger than the PlayStation 2 set that I did over the weekend. I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to spoil it, though even though when the video goes live, it'll, it'll be in the title. But if I can, um, I'm just waiting for like this payment to go through. And then again, it's just this huge lot a ton of stuff in it which i can't wait and there's another thing to go with again i'm trying to not give any type of details that i will give any hints to you guys but as long as if i could get both items fantastic if i could get only one out of the two that's still a good deal but i can't wait to share with you guys what it is because it's super exciting and it, it just it's going to be crazy that's all i have to see on that one so the other thing i want to go ahead and talk about is um, E3. Again, E3 is, I believe, in like, what, less than 10 days from now. And there's just a lot of games in general. And uh, I know some people are going to kind of be curious about the Xbox One Scorpio. Is it something that I plan on getting on a release day? The thing is for the Scorpio is that I have a gaming PC and Microsoft has kind of shifted the way their games work to the Now Play Anywhere program where if you buy it on the Xbox One, you also have it on the PC, uh, especially for the, their exclusive titles and some select third party games. And because of that, there's like almost a sense of no reason to have uh, pretty much the Xbox if you have a gaming PC. If you don't have a good enough gaming PC, then it makes sense to buy the Xbox One. Uh, again, depending on your aspect and what next, some people are not comfortable building a PC or don't know what to look forward to. A lot of general things like that. Uh, one thing I am, again, I'm just kind of curious what Microsoft does with it. Uh, there is a rumor uh, it's a vague rumor, I doubt it's true, that the new Scorpio console will have backwards support for the original Xbox games. If that's true, then that would be pretty cool, meaning that you'll have original Xbox 360 and Xbox One games. Because one thing I didn't notice is that it seems like Microsoft is kind of moving forward a little bit. Uh, even though Sony is still killing it with their exclusive games, but some of the features they kind of went backwards on. Like for example, for the uh, PlayStation models, you have the PlayStation 2 that's able to play PS2, PS1 games. Then you have well, the early edition PlayStation 3, which is the 40 gig model, I believe, could play PS1, 2, and 3 games. But then later versions of the PlayStation 3, they removed that backwards support for PS2, meaning that you could play PS3 and PlayStation 1. And then here comes the PlayStation 4, where it doesn't seem to have that backwards support. It's like, what happened there, Sony? But... I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to see what they're going on. But the games I'm excited for that I would like to see more information on. Hopefully Kingdom Hearts 3. I want at least a new trailer for Kingdom Hearts. I mean, I'm going to be probably in my 30s by the time Kingdom Hearts 3 ever releases. But, I mean, I was a kid back in the day. I'm close to 30 years. Actually, I'm 27. So, not just a, a, you know, a few more years off. 
But I mean, I want a, at least a trailer, a release date, something for Kingdom Hearts 3. Hopefully maybe some footage for that Final Fantasy 7 remake. Um, God of War, I'm super pumped up for. And I'm trying to figure out, so, um, I know Microsoft has some exclusives. Um, they stated, or at least based on what they pinned on Twitter, is that they're not, they don't have any like Halo plans. Unfortunately, I'm a big fan of the Halo series. That's probably like one of the only uh, exclusives that I tend to like on Microsoft's platform. But who knows? Hopefully Microsoft could surprise us. I want to see them come out with some exclusives, kick the console back up, because I feel like they're lacking in that exclusive department. So hopefully we get something exciting. You never know. Again, the, their big announcement is the Scorpio, and that's all I know about. Uh, what else? There's, um, I forget what the game is. I think it's uh, Detroit Become Human. Something like that. It's like from the same makers of Heavy Rain that I'm excited for. Um, what else? Oh, the next Call of Duty game. Again, I'm not a big fan of Call of Duty in general. However, I am excited for this next installment because it's World War II. And there was a lot of shooters back in the day growing up where it was based around that time zone. And they're a lot of fun. Like right now I'm replaying through uh, Medal of Honor. Uh, what was it called again? The Medal of Honor Frontline. I almost got the names mixed up. So I'm replaying through that one's like D-Day. So you got the whole ship sequence and stuff like that. Especially on that the beach scene. That's uh, pretty horrific. But um, I can't wait to see how that looks, honestly. I mean, especially with how graphics are in today's standards. Uh, that, that's going to be pretty sick. So I'm really excited about that one. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, though, uh, about the fat PlayStation 2 here is that the only thing that's actually wrong with it is that it can't read um, any blue discs. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's take, for example, this one right here, NBA Streets. Again, even though I'm not into sports games, I do like the Street series. I've played the NBA Street, FIFA Street, but not like the uh, NHL. Uh, it wasn't NHL, it was uh, the football one. I don't know, I always get to see. That's how my knowledge is in terms of sports. So um, like, for example, this one, as you can see, this has a blue bottom disc. Uh, so meaning that this fat model can't play these uh, anymore for whatever odd reason. But I think that's kind of a, a hardware malfunction that tends to go out on the fat models. But the um, the slim PlayStation 2 reads them just fine. There's no issues with that one. It's just the fat model can't read the blue discs. And I'm pretty sure the seller didn't know that because they didn't have any games that had a blue bottom disc. But um, again, like I said, super excited for uh, E3. I'm also hoping uh, to order that new uh, HTC Vibe audio head strap. Right now, they're kind of sold out everywhere, so I never got the chance to even pre-order the damn thing. So uh, hopefully I can get my hands on that one because I'm actually super excited for the head strap. It may be a while, but who really knows? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. Just, like I said, I want to kind of give you guys a quick update, give you a quick general discussion about a few different topics. Like I said, PlayStation 2 is working great. Hopefully I can get this next other haul uh, here soon. It may I may divide it into a couple videos. So uh, I'm kind of hoping to get the one tomorrow as long as my payment through my card goes through. And then the other one on Thursday when I get payday. But again, just super excited. And if you kind of cares why am I buying all these old systems now all of a sudden, uh, it's pretty much been kind of a little passion that something I have planned on doing for quite a while now, but I just had to wait to the right opportunity is that I wanted to own a lot of the stuff that I had growing up as a kid and a lot of the past consoles. The ones that are right now a bit difficult for me to get my hands onto because they're a bit pricey are the stuff like all the like the Nintendo consoles. They're pretty expensive and the Sega um, the Sega CD is also pretty expensive as well. So I haven't found any really good deals on that. A lot of people had bundles for like $200, $250. Uh, but again, they're pretty crazy. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like a little dream. Just kind of, again, wanted to own a lot of the stuff that I had growing up as a kid. Because, you know, back then, I didn't have like the money that I did now. It's not like, you know, back then I was working three jobs and whatnot. And, um, you know, one of the things I want to do is over here in this corner, you can't really see it, but... I have this really old dresser, which doesn't really fit in this room too well. I mean, it doesn't really match well with anything. I basically want to kind of get rid of that, get like some type of shelving unit, and I have like a lot of the old systems on there with like switches and stuff like that, so I could toggle between each console. But uh, uh, just kind of a little project off to the side that I wanted to do. And of course, the only way to do that right now is trying to find some good deals because I don't have any cool places around here like yard sales and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of the yard sales around here are just clothes and DVDs and that's 
really about it. There's not really like any video game stores or besides, again, just uh, the, the more up-to-date stuff like GameStop, Walmart, and all that. They don't have like the, all the retro things. But uh, again, just kind of a little project that I have going on. And I think that's pretty much about it for this video. I'm just kind of rambling on now. Um, but if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And before I forget, uh, what are you most excited about for E3? Is there a particular game that you're hoping to see? you want more information about again let me know in the comment section down below until then i'll see you guys next time